school respiratory motor system examination also comprises of inspection and palpation then assessment of tone number third will be power number four will be reflexes number five will be coordination and gait right so you have to renumber number one inspection and palpation like you do inspection and palpation of every other examination then assessment of tone tone is also a part of palpation because in examination of tone you will touch the muscles right then you assess the movement and power then you do the reflexes and coordination by mistakenly i write down it on uh, above the power but reflexes we examine the reflexes after assessing the movement of muscle and assessing the power last one will be coordination and gait examination right now what we do in the inspection there are few things which you must know that uh, how you uh, examine number one like for any examination there is requirement of proper positioning of the patient number one number two proper exposure right now proper positioning means the best position for ill patient that we make them to lie down on the bed and then we examine or you can ask the patient to sit properly relax and then we can do the inspection of the muscles right because without proper inspection you cannot pick out different type of abnormalities number one number two proper exposure because without proper exposure for example if you need to examine a shoulder girdle of the patient and you expose the patient up to uh, only the elbows you cannot examine upwards so for the proper uh, inspection of the muscles you need a good and proper exposure um, in males we can expose the patient uh, up to the mid thigh for lower limb examination and we expose and uh, we can take out the complete shirt of the patient uh, uh, when we examine to the upper limb and shoulder in male patients while in female we can uh, take the exposure up to the knee or if circumstances allow you can take up to the uh, thigh uh, and but in upper limb examination of the female patient you can expose up to the arms or the shoulder you cannot take off the shirt of the female patients right so uh, proper sitting posture or proper lying down posture number 1 for inspection number 2 good exposure now what are the third thing for need a good inspection you must have to compare both sides means if you examining you are inspecting the one arm you have to compare it with the other arm only in that case you can pick the any kind of abnormality right otherwise if you do not compare right from the left you will might miss many things for example if patient is cachexic or who has a chronic disease and he has a wasting of whole body and you just examining one limb and did not compare it with the other limb in that case you might misinterpret that there is wasting of the one arm might be he has a generalized wasting but if you are not comparing both sides then you can miss that thing right so proper positioning proper exposure and comparison of the both side right now what is the third rule of good inspection the sorry fourth rule fourth rule for the good inspection is that you have to go systematically for example for the upper limb either you go proximally means from the shoulder to the distally till the hand or you can examine start your examination distally that is from both hand then go to the forearms then go to the arms and the shoulders and you have to compare both sides and go in one direction on the both limbs as well similarly you can apply this in the lower limb you can start your inspection from the foot then go to the leg and then go to the thigh or you can ins start inspecting from the thigh to the leg then to the foot right so you have to go systematically if you go, do not go in the systematically your examination will be random you cannot comment on any asymmetry or comparison between the two limbs right so you must keep in your mind four things number 1 good positioning number 2 num good exposure number 3 you have to inspect symmetry means both limbs simultaneously and you have to go either proximally to distally or distally to proximally 
right now what you do or what you inspect why we are doing inspection there are many abnormalities you which you can find on inspection of the uh, motor system for example any obvious deformity any wasting of the muscles which can be usually a part of what diseases wasting you can find in any neuropathy which can be generalized or mononeuropathy which can be post traumatic or due to any systemic disorder you can find wasting in long standing myopathies you can find wasting in motor neuron diseases so you can you look for the wasting now you where you look for the wasting you look for the wasting in the hand in thenar and hypothenar you turn your hand and you look for the <laughs> guttering of the instaurasia on on the forearm you compare both the forearm because sometime there is a disease which is called as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis which is a variant of motor neuron disease what it do it causes asymmetric weakness of the forearm right is usually found in the young adult males young males so unilateral wasting of the forearm point towards it right now in the uh, and you, if you similarly you can look for the uh, any wasting or abnormality in uh, arms or shoulder girdle and you can find wasting or, or any abnormality here due to any brachial uh, plexus injury or uh, right so this is the wasting now you can uh, similarly you can look the wasting in uh, many type of neuropathy or motor neuron disease in the lower limb as well for example very famous charcot marie tooth disease which give you inter inverted champagne bottle like uh, appearance and uh, uh, you will um, get wasting of the calf muscles right and very thin leg but good thighs so now this is um, you can find this now sometime um, you ask the patient to outstretch the hand straight right so in cases of red drop uh, means radial nerve injury which causes the wrist drop the affected side on the affected side there will be a drop of wrist right so this is called as uh, wrist drop so you can now similarly in the lower limb when the patient is lying down you can uh, very easily pick foot drop which can be unilateral which can be bilateral in cases of chronic neuropathies you can easily find out that so uh, on inspection you will look for the wasting you will look for the any foot drop you can look for the previous scar of the trauma surgery or deformity beside that uh, in muscles you will look for the hypertrophy where you will find the hypertrophy hypertrophy means increase in the muscle bulk this hypertrophy uh, you can see in calf muscle in cases of muscular dystrophies especially in duchenne and becker muscular dystrophies right okay beside this whatever you do there is another term which is called as fasciculation these fasciculations are abnormal twitching movements which you can see in the muscles large muscles especially in the calf thigh arm or forearm fasciculations are characteristics of motor neuron disease right or involuntary movements which can be tremor dystonia chorea there are various type of involuntary so these all things you will pick on the inspection of the muscles okay uh, now beside this i have told you you can look for the bulk where is the bulk loss bulk loss occur in the lower motor neuron lesions which causes wasting in the upper some of the muscles now upper motor neuron can cause disuse atrophy of the muscles sometime certain occupational or sports injuries can lead to muscle wasting or hypertrophy because the muscles are excessively used so they cause hypertrophies now there is a generalized wasting in the muscles beside this calf hypertrophy which you can see in rheumatoid arthritis and cachexia okay there is another disease which is uh, associated with the hypothyroidism hypothyroidism can also give you calf hypertrophy and bulky muscles so these are called as hercules man now uh, i have already told you that before commenting on the wasting of muscle you must look all limbs you compare them side by side and in the whole as well so wasting can be generalized generalized wasting you will find in any cachexia any um, malabsorption in any of the chronic infection or rheumatoid arthritis or hyperthyroidism you can find proximal muscle wasting with rarely some kind of myopathies and distal muscle wasting you can comment in 
and the type of neuropathies right distal muscle means the muscles which are present in the hand and the forearm in the upper limb and in the lower limb foot and uh, legs right so these are called as distal muscles but proximal muscles are the one which involving the which comprises of the bulk of arm and thighs in the lower limb okay so i think you people have an idea of upper and lower motor neuron region so if any of you can reply me that what are upper motor neurons and what are lower motor neuron regions just type in the chat i will read it okay now fasciculations i have told you on inspection you will look for the fasciculation or any other movements which can be tremor chorea dystonia slowness of movement and all and uh, these are fasciculations are the irregular twitching which involve uh, which you can find um, that these happening over the skin of the muscles at rest you do not need to um, uh, to see them to bring the muscles in the action and these are usually found in the lower motor neuron diseases uh, beside this you can see some time myoclonic jerks the myoclonic jerks are the one of the form of epilepsies and these are shock like jerks and they cause the contraction of the one muscles and uh, um, usually they occur for few seconds but these are again come under the heading of abnormal movement it could be myoclonic jerks it could be tremor the abnormal movement can be dystonia can be chorea or can be parkinsonian features right okay eyes due to the lesion of the nerve bundle while lower motor neuron okay um navera shweep uh, i think i need to rephrase your answer right uh, you must know the concept of this upper motor and lower motor neuron lesion because this is very important upper motor neurons are the one which originate from the cerebral cortex right if you can recall your cortico spinal tract they originate from the cerebral cortex all the sensory pathways originate ending in the uh, cerebral cortex but we sensory pathways do not give motor weakness or wasting or fasciculation so we mainly concerned with the cortico spinal tract so cortico spinal tract they originate from the cortex they come into the corona radiata just recall your neuroanatomy okay then they go down they converge on the internal limb of the uh, anterior limb of the internal capsule from there they go down further they pass through the brain stem in the brain stem what they do in the medulla they decussate means right sided fiber go to the left side and left sided fiber go to the right side from the brain stem they go down to the spinal cord now from the spinal cord these fiber for the upper limb terminate in the anterior horn of the cervical uh, columns of the cervical region of the spinal cord for the muscles of the thorax and abdomen they go to the thoracic and upper limb thoracic vertebra uh, thoracic anterior horns and then for the lower limb they go further down and they terminate on the anterior horns of the uh, lumbar vertebra right so up, up to this level these all are called as upper motor neuron so any abnormality in the brain corona radiata internal capsule brain stem or in the spinal cord they can cause upper motor neuron now as they synapse on the anterior horn this from this point lower motor neuron start from the synapse at the anterior horn from the anterior horn they go further now they go further and they pass into the uh, dorsal and ventral root rami from where they form the nerve nerve go into the neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction go into the muscles so anterior horn cells peripheral nerves neuromuscular junction and the muscles these all are the part of lower motor neurons i hope this concept is cleared now now uh, okay now uh, i bought this videos because i was unable to attach the videos uh, uh to show you how the fasciculation looks like let me check if these links work wait for a second i think this
fasciculations. Okay, now I am playing this video for you people so you can have an idea that how fasciculations you can find because uh, fasciculations, uh, you do not encounter them very frequent. These are very rare and I mean um, in every three months we see one patient with fasciculations. I hope okay, this video uh, run. Why this is not running? Okay, now it start working. See, there are few twitching movement like in the muscles. They are occurring spontaneously. These are the this is the muscle of lower limbs, right? Uh, here you can see two abnormalities. One, there is a very very hypertrophy. Uh, these muscles are very large. Usually the thigh muscles are not that much large, right? Calf muscles, sorry. So these are the calf hypertrophy. And in between, you can see these are abnormal twitching movement which occur for one or two seconds. This disappear and then it's like a worm. Worm are moving under the surfaces. I don't know what this is now. Now, so um, I think you people uh, get this... Uh, fasciculation are you people able to see that video reply me quickly so that i move forward okay so you people get an idea that how the fasciculations look like okay now Achha, now you will check look for the we did the inspection on inspection we find all these things asymmetry of the bulk Wasting, hypertrophy, hypotrophy, and all. Uh, I bought the way now. These are the pictures which can you can see. Now, this is the um, picture of the wasting. If you compare both sides, his left limb is good. Hands are you can see there is a slight wasting of interosseous muscles here, but the forearm and arms are good. Shoulder is also very good. But if you compare with the right side, there is wasting of, again, the dorsal interosseous in the hand. Forearm is better, but arm is wasted along with there is a wasting of shoulder as well. Now you can see. So there is an asymmetry. So with the proper exposure, you can find this. Otherwise, you can miss this finding in the arm and in the shoulder girdle. Right? Now you can see there is a wasting over the scapula. So this is now this is the wasting in the hand. If you compare the both in hand, where we look for the wasting, especially in the thinar and hypothenar areas, which where my cursor is moving. Okay, so you can see, and there is a flattening of these thinar and hypothenar muscles. So this is the wasting of small muscle of hand. When you turn these hands upward, you can see there is a guttering of the dorsal due to wasting of the dorsal interosseous in the hands it's not visible here properly but you can visualize it in this picture so this is the wasting of small muscles of hand so till now you people are getting okay so we have seen the wasting we have seen the fasciculations and with the fasciculation we have seen the calf hypertrophy as well now after inspection what will we do we check for the tone tone come under the heading of palpation because in the in assessing the tone we touch the muscles okay beside assessing the tone we have to uh, we palpate the muscles there are very few disorders of the neurology not the neuromuscular, uh, rheumatological, but the neurological disorder which can cause tenderness of the muscles. Otherwise, muscle tenderness is characteristic feature of all the musculoskeletal disorders. Right? So for ne neurological disorders, where there are only two, three disorders which can cause tendon of the muscles if you palpate them. One, one is the uh, myositis. And other one is the 
that vitamin D osteomalacia, which can cause tender muscles. And uh, number three is the some of the, uh, the metabolic diseases of the muscles in which muscles got easy fatigue. McArdle and Torrey diseases are examples, right? So you can learn these two, three names because there are very few disorders in the neurology who can cause tender muscle. Otherwise, no neurological disorder causes tender muscles tenderness of the muscles right now you will check for the tone tones means if you move the muscles around the joint for example in the wrist joint you will do circumduction means you rotate in all directions on elbow joint you will do flexion and extension of the elbow and on the shoulder joint you will do adduction abduction again the circumduction of the muscles right if there is a normal tone means tone is normal because assessment of tone is being done or you can assess the tone properly once you start examining the patient like if you examine five ten patients then you will be able to assess that the tone is increased or reduced right now uh, in the lower limb on the ankle joint you will do plantar and dorsiflexion and the circumduction on the knee you will do flexion and extension and on hip what you will do flexion of the hip joint extension of the hip joint and circumduction actually few there are few things which i cannot explain you properly without being practiced on the patient like the stone i cannot teach you the stone um, or you will not get a good idea until unless you don't do it on the patient unfortunately due to um, this covid pandemic we are unable to teach you at the bedside but there are few things which i can tell you so uh, for that, you can go and watch YouTube videos because it's very difficult to attach the YouTube videos uh, in this my PowerPoint slide. I have tried and I am unable to do it. So um, you can go and just uh, check how we watch the videos. One for how to assess the tone. What are the maneuvers and how to assess the power? right okay so now when you assess the tone there are only two abnormalities there may be a hypertonia or there may be a hypotonia hypertonia yeah. means g <laughs> yeah. dr mera screen, screen share aapki nahi screen share ruk gaya ji ji mere paas screen share aa raha hai dobara karti hu dobara kar so for examining um you need either you we will find hypertonia means when you're doing all these movements at the joint either circumduction flexion extension internal rotation or external rotation you will feel resistance or you have to exert extra power so it means there is an increase in tone so this is called as hypertonia or when you are doing these movement and you feel that limb is very flabby so this is called as hypotonia. Now in all of the causes of upper motor neuron lesions, I have told you from the cortex to coronary artery to internal capsule, brain stem, and up to the spinal cord. If there is any pathology, it leads to hypertonia. And anything which involves the lower motor neurons, that is anterior horn, peripheral nerve, neuromuscular junction, or the muscles themselves, it causes hypotonia. Now, beside this, we can find hypotonia in cerebellar diseases and in cases of spinal shock, means any acute spinal cord injury in which all of the corticospinal sensory pathways are blocked for some time. So this is called a spinal shock. In that case, there will be a reduced tone, right? So this is how we assess the tone of the muscles okay uh, now there are two type of hypertonia means one is spasticity other one is called as rigidity uh, if you can recall uh, your motor system examination one is called as clasp knife spasticity one is called as leg pipe and other is called as cogwheel rigidity right so the clasp knife is the one means you open the knife and it open up right means in the start of the movement you feel much resistance but as you continue to the movement for example if you are extending the elbow joint when you start extending the elbow joint in the initial phase you will find extreme resistance or you have to exert much power but as you continue to extend the elbow you will feel a give away and then the limb extends smoothly so this is called as clasp knife 
means you when you open the knife so this is called as clasp knife koi bhi aap churi open karte hain ya chaku open karte hain then that case initially you uh, will exert some power and then it open up smoothly so this is called as clasp knife right okay now uh, other is called as lead pipe lead pipe is called as it's like example you are bending a pipe of lead so in bending a pipe of lead you need to exert force which remain throughout till the end of your required task so the force or resistance remain same throughout the movement it is called as lead pipe rigidity it is usually seen in extra pyramidal system okay now what is called as rigidity rigidity means this is the term which is usually associated with the cog wheel rigidity cog wheel rigidity is the one in which when you start examining the limb for the tone you feel the resistance this is called as rigidity now what is cog wheel cog wheel is the wheel which is associated it is its resemblance is like that okay? there is a wheel which is associated with the cow or any camel cart and it has a horn or spikes on it so as the spike strike the ground you will feel a jerk so in rigidity when you are trying to overcome this movement in between you will get the jerks along with rigidity means increased tone and superimposed jerk this is called as cog wheel rigidity it is usually seen in parkinson's disease okay now we will do the deep tendon reflexes in the end we will go for the uh, power now uh, how we assess the power and where they assess the power so we did the inspection palpation and now we are doing for the power assessments now for the mrc scale of muscle power assessment what uh, what we do first you know this is scale mrc is medical research council scale in the basis of this scale we uh, give scoring to the power of any muscle group right so first you learn this uh, there are five grades of power one zero means no movement there is a complete paralysis and five is normal power right now what is the power one power one means how we assess the power when we ask the patient to follow our command and they follow our command smoothly this is called as three means for example if i ask the patient to straight their hands in front of them if they are sitting and uplift means they followed my command and they are uplifting means they are moving against the gravity they are overcoming against the gravity so this is called as three power if i ask them they he is sitting or lying and they are placing their hand in their lap and i ask him to uplift your hand but he is unable to do means his power is not three is less than three now i ask him to move his hand side by side or in the roll in the bed he is able to do that but unable to uplift the hand from the lap or the bed It means he cannot uplift against the gravity but can rotate horizontally so this is called as grade 2 power grade 3 power means able to do against the gravity means if i ask them to uplift their leg they are able to do this is this means they are overcoming the power of gravity but for the lower limbs similarly for the upper limbs but if they are unable to uplift their leg or the hand but they are able to move their leg or arms horizontally in the bed or on the floor this is called as power 2 power 1 is that when i give them command to move their limb, limbs but they are unable to uplift them they are unable to move it horizontally but they are able to flickering movements mean they can perform some flicker of their fingers or they can uh, give you so slight uh, shaking or shivering movements of the leg but they are unable to move even them uh, on horizontally on the floor this is called as power 1 now what is power 4 and 3 acha this is initially it will be difficult for you to remember but repeat it recall and registration of this you will be able to remember this grade of scale this this grading is a data you have to learn it right now grade 4 this is the movement means patient is unable to patient is able to lift against the gravity now if you are asking them to elevate up the limbs you exert the power with your hand on the leg and 
pull it down right so this is called as against the resistance some resistance so this if still patient is able to maintain that posture this is called as four and if they are able to uplift their hands or they are or they can overcome your resistance this is called as power five right so there are total four grade five grades of power zero means no movement at all power one means only flickering movement or few uh, twitching movements of the legs or fingers especially toes okay power three able to move side by side or horizontally but unable to uplift power three patient is able to move against the gravity or can uplift power four is the movement possible against some resistance power five they are able to uh, sustain their resistance or sometime if they have a good muscle or good build they can overcome your resistance so this is called as uh, power five okay hmm so this is how you check the power we check the power in different muscle group small muscle of the hand at elbow and at forearm or at the shoulders right what we do uh in the hand we make a fist and we ask them to move upward and we give the resistance from our hand and pulling the wrist downward if they are able to sustain this posture this means they have a power 5 but if with my resistance their hand go down this is called as power 4 if they are unable to move the wrist upward instead their wrist is here so this is called as power 3 right similarly we do in the opposite direction we put our hand here and ask them to force exert downward right so this is the wrist flexion and extension for the small muscle of hand we ask them to stretch their hand with finger straight they do adduction and abduction of the fingers and th by this way we check their power of the small muscle of hand now uh, how we check at the wrist because we have to go systematically distally to proximally so after hand here come the wrist so we check the wrist flexor and we check the wrist extensors in this position we ask them to flex their hand they are flexing you can see the this brachioradialis is prominent this patient is flexing their hand and we are resisting we are exerting the power downwards means we are forcing them to extend their elbow if they are able to hold this position means their power is very good the power is 5 similarly we check the elbow extension how we ask them to extend the elbow downward and we put our hand here means we are resisting their elbow extension this is how we check the elbow extension for the shoulder muscle group what we do we make them to bend their elbow and bring their elbow parallel to their body similarly in this way now we put the hand down on the both side because we have to compare both side sorry i forget uh, when you are checking the power of the right hand similarly way you have to check the power of the left hand when you are doing the flexion and extension of the right elbow uh, you first check the flexion or extension whatever you want if you are checking the flexion of the elbow on the right side then will you will check the flexion of the elbow on the left side as well similarly if you are checking the extension of the elbow on the right side same goes for on the left side here we do the bilateral simultaneous assessment in this way what we do we ask them to pull their hand downward this is how we checking the shoulder adduction adduction and we give the resistance from down so that their hands do not come down this is we are checking adduction for abduction in the similar posture of the hand we keep our hand here up and we push the force downward and ask them to uplift their arms means we are checking the shoulder adduction if they are able to overcome our resistance or they are able to maintain this posture this power is normal right so for uh, checking the tone and for checking the power you uh, there's lot of video on the youtube you can go and check uh, i download so many videos but they were not uh, uh, 
playing well on the PowerPoint and I was unable to uh, attach as well. So uh, this is how you check the power. I think you people are with me right till now. Is, is there any difficulty you are finding? You can just drop your question in the chat box. Okay. So now bulk, tone, power. Now after assessing, you have to grade the power, right? Now, why we need to check the power? Because uh, what happened? Um, power can be normal or can be reduced, right? And uh, in upper motor neuron, due to descending motor pathway, I have told you what are they? Uh, they cause weakness. And when wasting or weakness of the muscles, so what it do? It causes uh, reduced tone, reduced power, but with increased reflexes, right? And increase in tone. So in upper motor neuron lesion, what you will do, you will find reduced power, but increased tone. Reduced power can be zero, means no power at all. In that case, you cannot assess the tone, right? But when his power is four or three or two, in that case, you can have an idea that tone is increased, right? And associated with increase in reflexes. I will tell you reflexes. We are going on the reflexes topic. And what happened in lower motor neuron? Lower motor neuron, I have told you from an anterior horn to exon to nerve, neuromuscular junction, peripheral nerve root or the muscles. So what it do, it reduces the power again, but the tone is also reduced. They have reduced or the absent reflexes and they have reduced tone. Beside this, sometimes they have atrophy and uh, and usually atrophy and fasciculations comes early in lower motor neuron lesions. Okay. Uh, now, we will go for the reflexes. We check reflexes in the last, starting from the inspection, palpation, checking of the tone, power, then reflexes is next step of the motor system examination. For checking the reflexes, what you have to do, you have to, why we uh, check the reflexes? Number one, what is the need of checking reflexes? Reflexes are being examined to check or look for the integrity of the muscles and the nerve supplying them or the root supplying them, right? So there is a grading system for the um, grading of reflexes as well beside power so means if you tap the hammer you you always have to tap the hammer on the tendon not on the muscles otherwise you will unable to get the desired reflex right so when you uh, tap the tendon and you get the normal response of the reflexes so this is grade 2 reflexes if your reflexes are diminished or reduced then the normal, the, the grade of tendon reflexes is zero. Uh, sorry, one. When you did not get any response or reflexes are absent, it's called as one. So one is absent, zero is absent. One is reduced or diminished reflexes. Two are normal reflexes. Now, there is two more grades, three and four. In grade three, what we have, a, we have a breast reflexes. And in, they are come very quick and they give you a very marked response as computer so these are called as brisk reflexes number four grade is reflexes are very brisk hyperactive and they have a clonus right so number three is brisk reflexes grade four is very brisk with clonus grade three reflex is normal grade one is diminished and grade zero is absent or no reflex Okay, now, uh, uh, first I will show you how you check the reflex, then we will go it. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, for checking the reflex, two things are very important. One, you have to make a good exposure, number one. Number two, your patient should be relaxed. Because in patients who are tense, there the muscle tone, the resting muscle tone is increased. Uh, 
so when you tap the hammer you will not get the desired reflex or you will get falsely low or diminished reflexes right so you ask the patient to sit relax comfortably you need a proper exposure now in upper limb we check three reflexes bicep brachioradialis and tricep these are for the upper limbs in lower limb we to check two reflexes knee reflex and ankle reflex. shoulder joint in the females it's better to remove shirt in the male right now what we do we make the arm in semi flex position like this we cannot check the bicep reflex in a straight arm or fully flex arm no position should be semi flex you ask the patient to drop his hand on your arm number 1 right okay so their arm should be in complete relax position now what you do you put your in this position you will able to palpate the tendon of bicep reflex very easily so you will put your thumb on bicep tendon right see one is exposure positioning of the hand in semi flex and the relaxing position of the hand then you palpate the tendon with the thumb of the other hand you slightly press the tendon this is the way that how you will get reflex very easily then you strike the hammer on your hand and you will look for the contraction of the muscle here right so this is how will you check the bicep reflex now other is brachioradialis reflex again what you do you make the arm in semi flex position along with that you will this is more you have to slightly semi flex the wrist joint as well and you have to put the arm midway between the pronation and supination now this tendon reflex is very superficial this tendon brachioradialis tendon it has insertion of this hair on the steroid process of radius right so you strike hammer on the radius but it is advisable that you put your finger on the steroid process of the radius and you strike the hammer on your finger because in this position bone is very superficial and striking with the hammer can cause pain to the patient you have to uh um make the patient pain free and comfortable as much as you can during the examination so what you do you have strike few centimeter above the steroid process now what you do you watch for the flexion of the brachioradialis muscle here where i'm pointing from the cursor okay now in the upper limb the last reflex is tricep reflex tricep reflex you know tricep muscle insert has has insertion on olecranon process right so what you do you again make the semi flex position patient should be in relax position you can uplift his arm with your hand so have a good visualization here you directly strike your hammer on the olecranon process and now what where you see oh, this cross at this point you will see the contraction of the tricep reflex contraction occurs simultaneously as you strike the hammer right so if there is normal reflexes the grade will be 2 If there is a diminished reflex grade would be one, or you cannot find any reflex means there is absent grade is zero. If you are brisk reflexes, you will get four grade. Along with that, if you find a clonus, this is called as grade five. Similarly, in the lower limb, what you have to check, you have to check the knee, and you have to check for the ankle. For the knee examination, you can make two position lying or the sitting. In lying position, what you do. you semi flex the knee right you semi flex the knee and you see there is a mistake in this picture there is no proper exposure you have to expose up to the mid thigh because and you have to palpate the tendon you semi flex the knee number 1 then you palpate the tendon of this 
thigh muscle that is quadriceps muscles there are four muscles so these are called as quadriceps muscle you strike the hammer on the tendon and then you see the contraction of the muscle in this area which is not exposed in this uh, picture similarly you can examine the patient you can ask them to sit and uh, they can um, hang their legs comfortably in relaxed position and then you strike the hammer uh, quadriceps tendon this is patella and between the patella and tuberosity of tibia there is a tendon on which you strike and you will feel the uh, contraction or this quadriceps muscle has a action of knee extension so, so as you strike this leg straighten up it goes up so this is called as uh, normal reflex right now for the ankle reflex um, it is very difficult to examine the ankle reflex so in sitting position ideally you have to make the patient lie down so what you do the and you have to compare both reflexes i am again and again emphasizing if you are checking the brachioradialis on the right check the brachioradialis on the left similarly for the uh, tricep and brachioradialis and for the knee now for the ankle reflex what you have to do you have to ask the patient to completely relax then you have to flex the knee right you make the 90 degree sorry 90 degree angle with the thigh and you have to strike the Achilles tendon. Now, what you do as you strike the Achilles tendon, you will find the contraction on his calf muscles, right? Now you can see these are the normal calf muscles. This is the normal calf muscles, but the the video which I have shown you of the fasciculation, it has a very large bulky muscles. So you now you have an idea that how the normal muscles look like and how the calf muscles look like. So you will find you will see a contraction at the calf muscles. So these are the postures. Uh, in which you bring the patient and then you do the reflexes. If anybody who is doing examining the bigger break your um, sorry bicep reflex and fully extend arm, that is wrong. Right? So there are few postures you have to keep in your mind. Now, bicep reflex. It has a root supply of C5 and C6. What the bicep reflex do? It causes the elbow. Uh, flexion. And now supinator jerk, which is also used for the brachioradialis muscle, and uh, the you have to remember that these nerve supplies because this will be asked in the exam. The bicep jerk is supplied by C5, C6 root. Tricep and brachioradialis is again supplied by the C5 and C6 root, while tricep jerk is supplied by the C6, C7 root, and it causes tricep is on the extensor side of the uh, arm, so it's called extension of the elbow. While in the lower limb, knee knee is uh, knee jerk is supplied by the L3, L4, and ankle is supplied by the S1, S2. So knee jerk causes extension of the knee, and ankle jerk causes plantiflexion of the knee. Now, beside this nerve supply, uh, you must have to know the root. For the bicep, there is a musculocutaneous nerve. Brachioradialis is supplied by the radial nerve and tricep is again supplied by the radial nerve. Now, knee is supplied by the femoral nerve and ankle jerk is supplied by the tibial nerve. So, beside these roots, you must know the nerve. For example, if there is an injury to the S1 root, only S1 root, it will cause loss of the ankle reflex. But you can find ankle reflex, absent ankle reflex in cases of tibial nerve also, right? So what we do when we do not find in cases of diminished or absent reflexes, there is a maneuver which is called as reinforcement phenomena, which here you can see we ask them for, uh, we ask them, especially for the lower limbs, we ask them to hold their hand in the way and when we have to strike the hammer we ask them to pull their hand apart means unhone apni mutthi nahi kholni lekin unhone isi position mein 
अपने हैंड्स दूर कर रहे हैं सो दिस विल एक्सर्ट अ फोर्स दिस इज कॉल्ड दिस री एनफोर्समेंट एंड देन वी अगेन चेक द मसल्स इन द लोअर लिम समटाइम व्हाट हैपेंड दैट रिफ्लेक्सेस व्हिच आर डिमिनिश्ड और नॉट ऑप्टेनेबल सिंपली विद दिस री एनफोर्समेंट फिनोमेना वी कैन फाइंड द रिफ्लेक्सेस सो फॉर दिस इन दिस वे वी कमेंड दैट रिफ्लेक्सेस आर डिमिनिश्ड और दे आर ऑप्टेनेबल विद री एनफोर्समेंट दिस मैनूअर वी परफॉर्म फॉर द लोअर लिम एग्जामिनेशन फॉर द अपर लिम एग्जामिनेशन व्हाट वी डू we ask them to clench their teeth as we have to strike the hammer we ask them to clench their teeth we strike the hammer and then we ask them to release their teeth right so for the upper limb we use clenching method clenching of the teeth and lower limb we ask them to grab their hands right so these these are the reinforcement phenomena okay uh, i have already told you upper motor neuron lesions are associated with increased reflexes beside that they have increased tone and they have a reduced power or the wasting but wasting is more marked with lower motor neuron or it come early in the lower motor neuron uh, sometime we have a motor neuron disease as well in which we have upper motor neuron uh, signs means hyperreflexia uh, hyperthyroidism is associated with the hyperreflexia hyperparathyroidism is associated with the hyperreflexia or vitamin d deficiency that is osteomalacia is also associated with the uh, hyperreflexia lower motor neuron lesions or uh, means any pathology of the nerve root nerves neuromuscular junction or the muscle causes diminished reflexes beside this hypothyroidism cause delay contraction delay relaxation of the muscles right now the last part of the motor examination is coordination and gait now coordination and gait uh, these are the part of cerebellar examination but some of the examiners they want us to and they want you to do the coordination in uh, motor system examination as well uh, is the class of cerebellar exam is your class on the cerebellar examination is done or still it has to do anyone can reply okay uh so for coordination we have to do few things in upper limb and some of the things in the lower limb uh for examination of the coordination in upper limb we have to check for the finger nose test rebound phenomena alternating rapid movements while in lower limb we have to do for the heel shin test and we check for the gait in lower limb examination okay it's not done आपके जो पीछे बैठे ना वो बहुत बोल रहे हैं अच्छा फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन व्हाट वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू चेक फॉर द फिंगर नोज अटैक्स फिंगर नोज अटैक्स या इन द अपर लिम वी हैव टू डू फॉर द रिबाउंड टेस्ट वी हैव टू डू फॉर द रैपिड अल्टरनेटिंग मूवमेंट्स व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज दिस जेडोकिनेजिया इन लोअर लिम वी हैव टू चेक फॉर द हील शीन टोस एंड वी हैव टू चेक फॉर द गेट आई एम नॉट गोइंग इनटू द डिटेल ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन यू विल फाइंड अ डिटेल लेक्चर ऑफ द सेरिबेलर एग्जामिनेशन इन व्हिच यू विल गेट ऑल दिस राइट सो Uh, this uh, coordination part will be taught to you in your cerebellar examination but you must keep in your mind and you ask your examination that sir or madam shall i check the coordination as well and gait or not if they ask you then you have to do so motor system examination comprises of inspection then palpation checking of the tone then do the power you have to grade the power right only checking the power randomly is not important you have to check on the both side equally and compare systematically and simultaneously and then you have to grade the power then you have to check the reflexes and then you have to grade the reflexes as them um, and coordination and the last part you have to check the planters 
right how you check the planters you strike the outer border of the feet with the key and normally planters ref, planter response is um, down going planters means plantar flexion but in upper motor neuron lesions or spinal cord lesions what you will get you will get up going planters means the toe the big toe move up and there is a fanning of the feet uh, i think we have a uh, few more minutes let me check i can show you uh, something from youtube or the google just wait i am checking the uh, this power mm extensor planters which you please let's stop planters okay where is the desktop mm wait a minute please planters sorry i think this video i am unable to play let me check i can system this is the desktop and planters is the photo goes i think system is not picking up give me few seconds more no it's not sharing it's not showing the picture okay uh i will show you in the next time uh that uh, planter picture but the last part of your examination will be examination of the planters and i have told you what is the method so this is how we have completed our motor system examination mm, if you have any question you have 2 uh, 3 minutes you can ask to me लाइट बोर्ड है ऑल हम्म आई थिंक यू पीपल विल बी गेटिंग दिस वीडियो ऑफ दिस प्लांटर्स रिसाइज ओके आर यू पीपल एबल टू सी दिस फोटोग्राफ व्हिच आई एम शेयरिंग ऑफ द प्लांटर्स प्लीज रिप्लाई मी Okay, no, unable to see. 
share the screen this one okay now are you able to see this is a normal plantar defrons when we strike at the outer border we strike from the down side from we start from the heel then literally we go up and we turn under the toes we stop as we get the response we might get response here here or we might need to go up so what happened in normal response there is a downward flexion of the big toe and toes so this is a normal plantar response what happened in upper motor neuron lesion or which is called as flexor plantar response as we strike the outer border we get upward movement of the big toe and there is a fanning or spread of the toes so this is called as extensor plantar or upgoing plantar these plantar response are upgoing in upper motor neuron lesions so this is how you uh, check the plantar responses okay now questions Uh -huh. how does the reinforcement phenomenon result in normal reflexes okay you know there is a reflex arc if you can recall your anatomy so with the reinforcement we give the more input to the reflex arc so it give more and more neurotransmission it go backward to the spinal cord and then come again so reflexes which are diminished they are usually obtainable by the help of reinforcement absent uh, reflexes due to neuropathy or any of the severe muscle disease they are not elicitable even with the normal reflexes for getting a reflex with reinforcement your nerves need to be intact or at least partially at least partially working if your nerves are not working you will be unable to get the uh, reflex with reinforcement even right so i think we are done okay hope you will get some part of the motor system examination and uh, now i am closing this session okay allah hafiz